Welcome to the Kupinger Call Analyst Chat. I'm your host. My name is Matthias Reinwart. I'm the director of the Practice Identity and Access Management here at Kupinger Call Analysts. And again, this is a special episode. This is the final episode for 2023. So we are using that episode to have a look back on 2023 around the areas of IAM and cybersecurity. So the sweet spots of Kupinger Call Analysts. And we want to dare and have an outlook uh, on trends and expectations towards 2024. And for that, I've invited Martin Kuppinger and Mike Neunschwander to this call. Um, Martin is the principal analyst and one of the founders of Kuppinger Coal Analysts. And Mike Neunschwander, I asked him who he is. He, he said, I don't know what I'm doing here. So this is where we start right now. So if we look back on 2023, um, what starting with cybersecurity, what were the most significant cybersecurity challenges that organizations had to deal with in 2023 and how were they addressed? Did, did, did we do well? Maybe starting with Mike? You know, I, I had this conversation with um, Eve Mailer, actually, and she, so uh, she, she said, why is it that it's 2023 and we're still dealing with the same problems after all the years? I'm like, you know, that's a really excellent question because 2023 in some ways looks a lot like every other year since, I don't know, like 2000. Right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there, we've got some new stuff happening, but it, but it feels like, you know, you know, we're still having password reset problems. Uh, we're still having, you know, just kind of like the, the, the issues that we thought we would have solved by now, right? And so I, I think that it's a good moment for reflection on that. Like, you know, are we are we doing it the right way? I don't know, Martin, how you feel about that? That's uh... yeah. So so how do I think about that? That's an interesting point. What what I see is, and I am fully with you. A lot of the problems are not new. I think there are some things which have probably had a bit, a bit of a bigger impact in 2023, and some of them may even have a bigger impact in 2024. The one is supply chain or software supply chain attacks. So attacks really coming in through through others and then, then spreading at scale. I think this is a growing problem. It's also not entirely new. We had solar winds and Kaseyar before we see others um, happening now. I think that that is one thing and this will not disappear because it's uh, sort of for attackers, it's a very logical means uh, for running their attacks. The other thing we I see is, is that Regulations are um, impacting the market increasingly. So we saw on both sides of the pond, we see so, saw some things coming up or see some things coming up, becoming effect, in effect now, like the European NIST 2 and the CRA regulations. And so we will see, I think, more pressure on a lot of organizations to, to really improve their cybersecurity posture, which is a good thing, but which is also... Um, a challenging thing because we don't have the skills uh, available on, on, on broad scale. Um, so there, there's a lot of work to do. Right. And these, these were the challenges. And, if I'm, and you've mentioned that, especially supply chain, very important topic just right now. There are organizations that were in the news for leaking information that you would not expect them to do. So there, there are still a lot of issues going on in there. But when we look at countering these, these uh, challenges, these problems, these issues, did we get better in 2023 when it comes to technology, to the software, to the services we use? Um, I think it's a continuous evolution. So, so both sides get better. The attackers get better, and the defenders, so to speak, get better. Um, so, it's not that there's nothing is happening. I think we see see quite some some very interesting innovation. We see an uptake of different technologies like Team, so managing more the security on infrastructure as a service, and we see I think also a lot of. Um, movement around applying AI for cybersecurity, improving XDR, so um, extended detection response, managed detection response, stuff like that. So we, we, we see things moving. The interesting question is probably more, are we fast enough in innovation and adoption of innovation? Uh, yeah, that's, that's obviously uh, uh, correct. I, I think that... Um, Obviously, you know, AI has to sort of be, show up at this conversation eventually. <laughs> so I'm just going to point out that basically with AI, 
which seems like a newcomer. Uh, it, 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 you know, we, we talk a lot about you know, people are very interested in getting uh, chatbots out there for their own content. Like uh, we were even doing that. You know, the thing is, is that um, it's easy to sort of socialize engineer, or you can you can sort of uh, get chatbots to divulge things that you would prefer they don't. Right. Or make up things that they shouldn't, you know. And and so I, I think that uh, we're we, we haven't really felt that in 2023, but I think we will feel that next year. Right. Uh, so more AI. Yeah. So are there more attacks via AI at the end of the day? So so also. Yeah. yeah. I, I think um, using I think that's which is, by the way, quite normal. We have. A uh, very fast innovation in the field of AI, uh, using generative AI, using bots that are utilizing generative AI and stuff like that. And as with every every rapid innovation, security is tends to lag a bit behind and the understanding of what we need to do and what we better don't do. So I think this is definitely a, a real risk, and there will be, unfortunately, probably a lot of learnings for us in 2024. Yeah. Right, so that was the bigger cybersecurity picture. But of course, Kupinger Cole is known for being um, an expert in identity and access management. Is there something that com comes to your mind that that was new in 2023? Although this, this is a, such a established market, is there something really 2023 in IAM that you would like to mention? Maybe starting with Mike. Well, you know, I'm I'm working on some research right now that's about identity threat detection and response. And it's taking me a little while to see how critical that's become, right? That, that, um, that it's already, uh, uh, you know, the, the, in, 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 in a CISO's attention, for example, <laughs> right? It's not, it's not just some kind of cute thing in the corner, right? It's, it's actually really center stage. Uh, and uh, it's something that everybody needs to want wants to talk about and hear about. And the the thing that I think that is most interesting about that is that you have the the people who normally work in the SOC and you never know their names. <laughs> right? And then and then the IAM IAM people and nobody knows them either. But the, the, those two are sort of getting together now, having coffee and stuff. It's uh, it's 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 been interesting to see the mix of cultures that has developed as a result of the need to solve identity threat detection and response. I, I'm I'm absolutely with Mike on that. I think this is important, and I'm lucky that it's finally happening, because I think when when all these AI based identity analytics stuff came out over the past three four years, I always ask the vendors. So, so can you also analyze what people actually do with their entitlements or what people try to do without entitlements, not just looking at the static entitlements? I think this is the step forward is ITDR. The other thing where I really observed quite some, some innovation, I think there are two areas. I see more and more things happening around policy-based access. Um, still slow, but it's moving forward. And the other area is decentralized identity. Where, where we see um, innovation both from a sort of more more state driven like in the EU where which is pushing the UDI the EU digital identity wallet and also very practical when you look at where Microsoft is moving with intra verified ID so we see evolution here and this really may may, may come closer to the, the breakthrough in adoption uh, 2024 2025 which which I would love to see because it will then really become extremely, um, in a positive sense, disruptive. Disruptive in the sense of enabling a lot of new things in identity management, doing a lot of things better while not, and this is very important, while not breaking existing identity management. So it can be joined very neatly. So this is what I see in addition to ITDR, but hopefully we see really more ITDR adoption. Right, so that was already a kind of an of an outlook into 2024. So you say ITDR is growing, um, policy based access control will be um, getting more important and will will, will show more of its strengths. Um, when we when I look back on on 2023 in at the cyber revolution in Frankfurt, I, I 
I did a talk on 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 NIST two and the implementation there, and uh, NIST two is for me one of these big examples of regulatory changes that also have a strong impact on IAM and on cybersecurity. So people are really forced to do risk management finally, risk assessment, and react to these risks and work towards a better security posture. Um, do you expect that to grow and to be more important for cybersecurity and IAM if we cover both topics? People need to be forced, apparently. <laughs> yeah, they need. To. I find that funny for some reason, but the but I, I think that um, it is interesting. The regulatory landscape is tightening, and you know, weirdly, uh, in America here, you know, I, I see people reacting to EU legislation because they are doing business there, right? And so suddenly. In, in America, we had to start sort of caring with here about what the EU thinks about some of these things. You know, I, we've been skating a long time, you know, like, you know, it, there's been kind of this, it, the internet has been one of those things that was, uh, at, the, at the beginning at least, pretty unregulated, you know, and what we're, what we're finding now is that the regulatory uh, regimes that are coming into play, if they weren't there already, are... Uh, I don't know, forcing me, you know, maybe that's the right word, but it, but certainly making other people care, right, uh, that normally wouldn't about, you know, take the, and, and this too is definitely part of that, Dora, others, right? These, these, are, these are basically words that weren't known a year ago. Well, you know, earlier this year, <laughs> right? Okay, I, I also see that we have, potentially a very huge impact here. I think this is also, and Matthias, I think you pointed it out at the uh, Cyber Revolution Conference and other speakers as well. I think it's also part of the liability thing. So you, 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 it really makes the sea level liable. Some of the regulations really bring in liability for, for cyber risks, um, which you just can't get rid of by an insurance you have as a manager. So you, you, you enter into more a personal liability. This is always a huge pressure. Like when we look at the financial regulations, uh, when the auditors come and have findings and the, these are sort of severe findings, then the pressure is very high because it goes really at the heart of the business. And I think this is what, where the regulations will change a lot because organizations must act. And additionally, several of the regulations, when you look at NIST 2, the the notification periods become extremely short. So you need to inform the, the authorities within 24 hours, within 72 hours, there must be a first analysis, etc. So you need to be very good in, in what you do in cybersecurity. And so I expect that there will be really a massive impact from these. Right. So if we now finally take a look into 2024, I think what you just said, Martin, is already some kind of what I'm aiming at here right now. What would be advice for organizations when, as we move in 20, into 2024, where to start improving their security posture, how to react maybe or to be proactive towards upcoming um, challenges? What would be your recommendations? Um, one, one key recommendation for next year by both of you before we close down, maybe starting with Martin? Only one. Uh, then I have to make a recommendation which consists of multiple parts. Uh, sure. Zero trust is, is not as popular anymore, but it's a super important principle. Understand what you have and what you need to gap analyze. This is something where Matthias and Christopher and the team can support extremely well. Understanding where are your gaps? What is your investment priority in this space? Understand how regulations map and look at the potential of Integrated services like XCR and managed services like MDR. Mike. Yeah, well, I agree with that. I, 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 it occurs to me we might be sort of at an end of one era and a beginning of another. We're just kind of in that slightly quiet place in between <laughs> because I think that um, there, you know, when I look back uh, on my career in the industry, there have been a couple of these moments where it's been like, okay, we used to get away with things. And it was, it's like remembering back when you were kids and, and being able to, to get away with things that your parents didn't know about. 
but but now you have to sort of mature that and you have to be become an adult in the row you know and i i think that uh, i think regulation i think that uh, the notification requirements like martin was talking about the the uh, just the, the consequences like the the game has gotten a lot more serious now you know and and it's going to require a, a, a very a very serious set of people you know to to really respond to it in 2024 right so it's really finally become business and it's no longer just tech um my, my final question would have been but we won't i i won't ask it and i won't expect any answers right now that would be the iam trends for 2024 and why don't i ask that and why do i not expect any any feedback we are already approaching EIC, uh, the 2024 edition of the European Identity and Cloud Conference. It will be in June this year. So this is my outlook into next year. And we will do several podcast episodes around IEM trends that will be covered also at EIC. So that will be something that we will be doing in the future very soon. And that is where we pick up all these IAM trends where you know that Kupinger Call is the expert for. So uh, I skipped that part. We have advice for organizations. We have your cybersecurity predictions and IAM also with, with the topic of, of ITDR. Um, some final ideas to both of you before our close down. What would be um, the next big thing that you would expect? This is something that we are always get, getting asked for. By, by um, You should know that you are an analyst. So You are the analyst. What would be the next big thing for 2024? <laughs> the next big thing, huh? Well, clearly AI is going to be on the menu. Yeah, it's uh, and for the reasons that we've already stated. So I don't feel like I need to go over that again. But uh, Martin, what do you think? I think beyond the, the obvious AI thing, it is a combination of leverage the potential and maybe understand the potential of. Decentralized identity plus last policy-based access controls for really reinventing how we do IAM. Right. Thank you very much. Thanks to both of you uh, for being my guests today. I know, Mike, you are in New York. Martin, you are in Stuttgart. So this was a real long-distance podcast episode, and it went quite well. So we had lots, not, not that much delay, which is nice. Um, we will talk again next year. So uh, looking forward to that. And then we will prepare EIC. If you are watching that episode or listening to that episode and you think you should be talking at EIC, yes, Call for Speakers is open. So reach out to our team and um, make your suggestion what to present and how you can also shape the future of IAM um, with Cooping a Call together at EIC. Thanks again, Mike and Martin, for your time and looking forward to having you as guests next year again. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye. 